afternoon, everyone. My name is Adani Girangu. I know I'm not new to most of you. Lead solution engineer, working with VMware and working closely with customers to help them with the integration and adoption of technology. Good afternoon. I think like Robert, I'll be also today will be the last day to say uh, Happy New Year. <laughs> Uh, yes, I'm Duncan, Duncan Eric Ogonji, uh, work with Oracle, uh, doing cloud, and in 2023, I want to see uh, whether there'll be that mind shift to be able to move to <coughs> uh, do the right thing for, for the business. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, all. Um, Richard Mudwe is my name. I look after cloud and cyber security for liquid intelligent technologies. Thank you very much. Okay, um, so um, I'll start with you, uh, Richard. So uh, the first question is, how, how does cloud computing change the way organizations work and how would they deliver value to their customers? So, thank you. And, and cloud computing, first of all, has become core in a lot of businesses that want to develop in the environment that we are in today. So if you start looking at what cloud computing brings in business, uh, number one, things like scalability. Your business is able to scale faster, scale quicker, more safely. Um, <clears throat> then you start looking at things like being able to change fast. So it drives your innovation speed. Um, if you look at um, the IT space, people who want to innovate, people who want to build applications and launch, um, compared to having your on-prem systems where if you need more power, you have to order, you have to wait for three, four weeks to get your memory in, to get your uh, processing power in, uh, while cloud, you can scale within minutes. So it's about clicking and saying you need more memory, your memory will be available. You're very quickly able to launch. So cloud for me drives business growth, cloud for me drives business scalability and uh, drives innovation, which ultimately grows the bottom line for any business. Um, what about you, Daniel? What in your, pers what in your opinion do you think is the way cloud computing has changed organizations and how they deliver value? Uh, thanks for that question. First of all, I think there's been a confusion uh, about what cloud is all about. Uh, a lot of us confuse cloud to mean hyperscaler. Uh, that is not the case. It's about how I consume services from my infrastructure. It can be on-prem as well as being in hyperscaler. Uh, coming to your question, uh, it has actually changed how we consume services from IT allowing us to focus on what is core to our business. Like for example, uh, in a banking industry, uh, do I focus on uh, IT infrastructure or focus on my customers? So it allows you as a customer to focus on what is core to your business. Uh, driving more innovation uh, because by actually consuming cloud services, it allows you to drive that infrastructure to capabilities that was not there before. So uh, a couple of years back when I was doing analysis of customer environment, you'd find an average system utilization to around three or four percent. And uh, ability for you to be able to consume services or add capacity on the environment, it is on a different level. When you talk about cloud environment, it's about a mouse, a mouse click and I have what I need. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I'm getting from both of you, um, flexibility and scalability. This is something that cloud computing has brought to our organization and changed us. What about you, Duncan? Do you have anything different or you agree with the, your fellow panelists? 100%, but I would probably also uh, add it from, uh, looking at it from two perspectives. You see, <clears throat> number one, uh, today, uh, most of business, wherever I, respective of the industry, that today, you know, every organization, they will push to be more customer centric. So, which means also that as uh, the product that the services that you give out to, to the customer is, the customer is at the center, it's more like, is a co-creator. So which means there's high demand from the customer to be able to, uh, I mean, I mean, pushing organizations to, to have the ability to, uh, you know, move faster in terms of delivering the service <coughs> and the product, whatever uh, <coughs> that you do. And then secondly, every sensible organization, and I believe we all work for uh, uh, those organizations, yeah. uh, look at, you know, the, 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 three, the three factors, uh, cost reduction, to increase revenue so that you can be able to profit maximize. And, and today, uh, like even uh, every CIO, there's that pressure also from the board and, uh, and the exec to be able to demonstrate how uh, can you help us increase revenue. And to be able to do that, there's now has to be a balance between cost 
and revenue. And this is where cloud plays a big role, as, as, as my colleagues also uh, mentioned. Uh, one of the, the key benefits is uh, it helps uh, the CIO in, 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 in cost reduction, because in terms of the local talk of uh, scalability or flexibility. Because today, if you are budgeting for your, for your hardware or, or for your storage, you'll say probably by the end of the year, I'll consume X amount. And uh, now what if you don't, you know, uh, you don't do that, but cloud gives you that flexibility that today, if uh, depending on the, as a business demands go up, then you can easily be able to stretch and, and meet that demand. And if it comes down, then so you don't, you don't have to use everything. It can also be on a package of pay as you go. So you only pay for what you're using. In a sense, helps you to be able to also manage that cost. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Duncan. So um, these are the benefits of cloud. We have scalability, we have flexibility, and Duncan has also talked about reducing your costs as an organization. Now, um, I'm coming back to you, Daniel uh, Ndirangu. Uh, so this year, there's a lot that we expect. And in terms of cloud, what are the advantages? Where can organizations leverage on to improve um, their services? What are the opportunities that, are, that exist this year? And yeah. Uh, to answer that question, I'd possibly go back to uh, what are the use cases uh, for cloud uh, solution. So most of the time when I'm engaging with you as customers and you ask the question, so uh, you want to embrace cloud, and you ask the question, why do you want to embrace cloud? And a lot of you are not able to answer that question. Uh, why? Because you do not understand the use cases. And uh, there are a couple of use cases that actually uh, drive cloud adoption. Uh, without going through all of them, but the ones that are actually find uh, most of the ones that are actually driving cloud utilization is possibly one of data center evacuation. Uh, some of you have actually decided you do not want to manage your data center. So you want to have that data center being managed by someone else and you want to focus on your core. So all that you want to do is to run your applications. Uh, the other part is possibly disaster recovery. You do not want to invest in disaster recovery. I want to possibly have that being uh, managed by someone else. And possibly the other area that I'm seeing a lot of customers utilizing cloud is also application development. You want this platform where I can be able to develop my applications, but they do not have the tools. So possibly I utilize the cloud, a hyperscaler environment or cloud infrastructure to actually develop the, the applications. And the list can go on and on and on. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, we are actually seeing uh, customers being driven to change their behavior when it comes to IT infrastructure uh, because of numerous use cases that are coming up. And we see this changing with time. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, I, I'll pose the same questions to, to Richard. Um, what are the advantages that organizations can leverage on this year on cloud? So I think some of the advantages are basically the benefits of cloud. And, and if we go back to what I said before in terms of growth for businesses, um, scalability, there's also the aspect of when you consume cloud, then as an organization, you are able to consume resources as a service. So you, you, you do not need to employ people to look at your environment when you have your on-prem. Sometime you might have a hybrid setup where you have an on-prem and you have a cloud setup. But if you look at it at the end of the day, the resources you will need to manage this environment will reduce quite um, fast or in a big amount. Um, when you have a cloud environment where cloud service providers are doing all the dirty work for you and what you do is consume service. Now, um, at a different level for a business, you can take advantage of cloud to basically add value to your end customers. And this is brought about by the advantage of cloud, which is efficiency. Um, uh, take a case in point, if you're delivering services to multiple locations in the country, um, and these services are based on an online system, um, sometimes you get delays and simple things like latencies will become a problem. When cloud comes in and the cloud service providers take care of your connection to the cloud platforms, of your efficiency in terms of um, getting your traffic into the cloud, then ultimately what you get is high quality of service um, from your organization to your end customers. So it's about efficiency, it's about quality of service, which ultimately again helps you grow as a business. It helps you add value as well. Um, what about you, uh, Duncan? Uh, just to, to build, or build, build on that, uh -huh. you look at it also where the business can benefit, uh, you know, the, the speed to market. Uh, the fact that, you know, you are able to develop um, uh, the service of the product faster 
and as he mentioned, you know, uh, with the cloud comes with, especially the the pl platform as a service, comes with those uh, development tools that can be able to, you know, easily uh, design and release the product uh, to the, the market much faster. So that's a very uh, uh, important advantage. Then again, uh, in, in any project in an, in an organization, you want to uh, release that new product faster. Nothing frustrates like a lack of visibility. And what cloud gives you is that the collaboration, that uh, finance department or uh, the rest of the business can easily be able to talk to the IT or the developer, whoever is developing the product and you know, collaborate and be part, uh, bring in the input. And as a result, now there's proper visibility from across the business uh, uh, leads. And as a result, you know, is a benefit to the, uh, uh, to the business in terms of even the product development or the service delivery. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, first, of, uh, first of all, uh, if you have any question, feel free to raise your hand and uh, I'll get to you, I'll get to you. So first, uh, thank you. Um, we talk about cloud and how cloud has made it um, seamless for us to work. Uh, it has made, made work seamless and it has created a hybrid and a seamless kind of environment. But how, how exactly can organization ensure that it's always seamless? Ensure that uh, the integration between cloud and edge is seamless and it <coughs> proves to be, and it's helpful to the organization as well. Um, I'll start with you, Duncan. Uh, I, I would also give it, uh, maybe to respond to that, yeah. uh, uh, a different uh, uh, approach. Um, yeah. But looking way back, looking at now also the three key components you've talked about, the process, the process, the technology, and, and also the people. Because what, what, what I've seen, and they will now moving to 2023, that if that uh, will change, you'll be able to you know, get a lot of benefit from uh, the cloud investment. So uh, more, more from people in terms of, uh, you know, the mindset and, and the culture, because the, the, the people in our organization, in fact, even in IT, you still believe, you know, I need to see my server there or yeah. I need to you know so if 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 that uh, does not change so that's a, a component that will be able to frustrate uh, the, the the intention or any 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 uh, any any approach or any work to be able to bring that that seamless integration between you know basically like how we do uh, we do business so I, I look I, I trace it back to first now the people of the three key components that uh what really uh, need to you know come out of be be mature of what where the technology or the you know is pushing the business to now for, from people point of view how do we have that shift the mind the mind shift and then also uh there are some processes you know by the way in the traditional way the traditional way of running of the it business uh when with 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 the cloud technology uh, the process that worked well in the traditional uh, setup may not work in uh, the Cloud new setup. Yes. Yeah. So those uh, fine tuning and balancing in, in those three uh, aspects will be able to ensure there's a proper or similar communication between now integration the between yes. the two. Uh, the integration between the two, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Daniel, um, how can you ensure a seamless and integration between Cloud and Edge? Uh, the challenge uh, being a techie, I always uh, stick to this one uh, policy, make it simple. Uh, a lot of us uh, find ourselves sleeping in data centers, uh, not because of anything else, but I want to make it complex. So I try to em also embrace a common technology across board and make it as simple as possible. So a lot of times you find like uh, you try to make it very complex uh, and uh, you find uh, most of the time it keeps on going down. Why? Because some of the things, and uh, a lot of times we find that like we do not have that complex uh, technicality or maybe skills to be able to integrate. Start from the basics and you grow as you go along. So the moment you complicate the environment, it becomes a nightmare. Then also embrace security at the end of the day. Ensure as you do whatever you do, make sure the security is tightly built in into the environment. Right now, we are actually are building an environment where you can actually have tight integration with security ensure you block what is not required. Most of the time you find like, a, because you do not want to go through complexity of configuring complex firewalls, I open everything. And then it's only when you are hit that you start now uh, tightening the security. Only open what is required. And that makes it easier for you. 
Thank you, thank you, Daniel. Embrace security and make it simple, guys. Make it, have you got a, make it simple. Um, over to you, Richard. Um, how can we how can you ensure that uh, the integration between cloud and edge is seamless? So, <clears throat> I think the first thing is planning well. Um, in anything that you want to do, whether in technology, in business, or even in your life, if you don't plan, then definitely you will find complexities. So planning includes identifying the risks, identifying the uh, possible complexities, identifying anything that would come in as a stumbling block, then dealing with them um, before you start the project. So once you plan, then you start picking issues like uh, cybersecurity, things that, that uh, they've mentioned here then you can already start designing. So you do things like uh, secure by design. So you eliminate the risk of cybersecurity when you're planning to start your journey as opposed to designing, planning, and then you think of securing. So if you plan everything well, and then you have your project planned well, you will remove the complexity. The other thing is maybe as an enterprise organization, you do not need really to have all these people to have a security expert, to have a cloud design expert or architecture expert, network expert, um, engage a managed service provider. So there are a lot of providers here, and if I can be allowed to mention a few, um, liquid intelligent technologies, um, these people would come in and walk with you the journey from the point of your thought. So giving you the thought leadership, why do you need to go to cloud? What do you need to take to cloud? What do you anticipate and what is the outcome that you expect from cloud? So once you understand that graph, that journey, then you can start picking all those problems that would bring complexities in your projects. And then from there, you can also take advantage of the, of the resources that, and experiences that the uh, managed service providers would come with. And what you will do as a client at the end of the day is to look at the SLA, to look at the project plan and make sure that all the milestones are met based on your requirements. And, and basically, uh, by engaging a managed service provider, you're removing anything and everything that uh, would bring in complexities. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Richard. And um, I'll, I'll open the floor. Uh, you, you had a question. Kindly mm -hmm. make your way to the mic and introduce yourself. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Wycliffe. Um, I work in data management, um, whereby I've developed a big concern lately about uh, stewardship for data protection. So in relation, though somehow in the last bits of the presentations from the panelists, my question was somehow being answered. So yeah, my main major concern, which I believe I would want to relate it to uh, one of the delegates here was talking about, I think she was asked about how are they adopting cloud technology? And she was saying they're slowly getting into it. So it brings one major question, or one major concern, cyber security. And in that, I believe from the discussions I've had, maybe not here, one of the major factors that make people not easily adopt uh, cloud technology is the aspect of privacy and protection. By that I mean, when you go to the cloud, you feel the platform is becoming wider for attacks, the cyber security attack. So I'd just like to get uh, from any or all the panelists, if you can demystify this, so that I believe some of us who are not able to ask such a question might get it from you. Now when they move out of here, they can say, now I think I can adopt the cloud technologies for our enterprise systems. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think Richard. Um, let me try and, and uh, understand the question. It was quite long, but I believe it's about where does cyber security play when it comes to cloud adoption? What is uh, the impact and what should we look for? So I think as I mentioned, so cyber security has multiple aspects and, and it's around people, process and technology. If you look at cybersecurity from the people perspective, because when you're moving to cloud, you will either be serving your customers who will be your people, well, to some extent, because there are now robotics coming in, or you will be, as an IT head, you will be serving your internal customers who are your operational people. Um, for the internal um, users, the most important thing is, number one, to identify where the biggest risk is. And you do that by 
uh, training, so cyber security training and awareness is very important. And through such, because as you do training, you will do things like um, um, uh, phishing attacks, uh, basically controlled, um, ethical hacking and all. Once you identify those, then you fix them. And then once you have people, because you will have um, an army of people who would be protecting your data. And one of the very um, little mistakes that people make in cybersecurity is to assume that it is only the people who are using the system, it's only the people who have accounts who should be involved in the training. Um, in my younger years in practice, we have used cleaners to breach very big companies just because they were not involved in the cybersecurity journey. So we need to be able to train anybody and everybody who walks in and is a staff member. Now, once you build that awareness, then you go into the system. You identify what is exposed in terms of your data, um, what needs to be exposed to the customers, maybe third parties, and what are the risks of exposing these data pieces. Once you identify those, then you start implementing things like policies. You decide if you've got a server that needs to be accessed by the public, you do not have control, you decide that's gonna be a DMZ. Um, if there's a service that doesn't need to be accessed from outside, then completely um, deny anybody from outside. Simple rule, um, deny all, permit only those that you need to, to permit. Now, once you have those plans that's in the system, and then you start looking at how do people come from outside into my system, because now you have the three elements. And from there now is where you start looking at who are these people you're dealing with, understand these people, KYC is very important. And we have also um, experienced clients who have been breached by their third party clients who they trusted a lot and did not do proper KYC. So the point there is understand your whole ecosystem in, in cyber security. And then when you're moving, you will have understood where your risks are. It's important to identify your risk and continually monitor because again, risks do change. So cybersecurity breaches morph. Today, if I attack you based on a certain protocol, certain port and all that, you will block that. I will do a different thing. So it has to be continuous. That's very important. Understand your whole journey and then put measures in each and every milestone. Don't wait for you to get to milestone 17 and then go back to secure milestone 12 because time will have overtaken you. So I think that would be the best way to look at it. Thank you, thank you, Richard. And um, so uh, time is not on our side, uh, but as the rest of you uh, answer the question, uh, I'd, like to also, I'd like you to also put it up with your parting shot. So um, I'll start with you, Daniel, um, answer his question and your parting shot. Uh, when it comes to security, uh, I can say it's all about perception and doing things right. Uh, so if I give an example, for example, if you have a physical server sitting next to you, you tend to feel you're more secure, all right? Because it's sitting next to you. Uh, you tend to feel a sense of insecurity just because that environment is running somewhere else. Uh, so it is the same. If you don't secure your physical server and I move my virtualized environment in cloud environment and embrace the same unhealthy uh, practices on physical environment, I'm going to be hit. Uh, so when you move to virtualized environment or cloud environment, they are fantastic technology when it comes to security. But I need to change my mentality when it comes to security. So a lot of times we see people securing their edge network and forget about lateral movement. That's why you get hit more. So we also have solutions whereby you can define security of those systems in micro uh, segmentation, uh, in the micro services uh, level, whereby I also define what is allowed and what's not allowed. My parting shot uh, when it comes to uh, cloud computing and edge computing is about embracing best practices. Uh, also, as one of my colleagues have said, uh, also consult where it's absolutely necessary and also avoid overusing resources, oversubscribing. So customers have been moving to cloud environment, oversubscribing, and then you get hit by massive bills. So only consume what is necessary. And also remove this mindset of I am moving to cloud environment, but I need to hog as much resources as possible. Remember when you move to cloud environment, it allows you to be dynamic. I can add or remove. Uh, so remove that mentality that I need uh, X amount of CPU, X amount of memory, X amount of storage that you don't need in the, in the first place. You can be able to increase as you go along. It is very uh, 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 dynamic in terms of uh, uh, resource allocation. If I need those resources at the end of the year, why do I need to pay for them throughout the year? Only use them when you need them. And that changes the dynamics of how much it costs you in terms of cloud services. 
and that's all I have. Thank you, thank you, Daniel. Um, Duncan? Yeah, just before the parting shots, we'll just add to, to that question. Yeah. Uh, recently, I visited a friend of mine who stays in a uh, gated community, and you know, they have security outside their guards and all that, so in the evening, then we opened, got in, and then locked his door. I was like, you have all this, why do you still lock your door? Then he reminded me of what the former president said, that uh, security starts with you. you know. So just to, you see, as much as what I, you can take to the bank, uh, one of the leading you know, uh, cloud solution providers like Oracle and the rest, uh, have what have really developed properly. So you can take it to the bank, very secure environment. But still, um, as, as Daniel mentioned about the mindset and, and you know, uh, the mentality, that you see already they have done it for me. There's, there's also a part that you, know, you, you, uh, you play. And mostly as you get in, involved, there's that education that you also, you know, you enable to get to know. Because you understand your business process. You understand what needs to be exposed uh, to, the, to the general public, what's meant for the, for the internet. How do you bring that separation? That's what we talked about the policies and all that. So uh, that involvement is also, very important and you ensure that the, uh, the the IT staff and the general uh, uh, members of the, of the organization are well empowered or educated to get to understand their roles because if I mean you no know, you're in the cloud and you have your laptop you connect you go to the cyber to connect and your, your password is not you know you not enabled a multi-factor authentication those basic uh, security staff so you still say, oh, cloud is not secure. And that is not. So it's so about now the education. And that's what we, we also do at Oracle, maybe, uh, plus other cloud providers. You ensure that you have the proper uh, knowledge about your role and your side, what you need to play, be able to ensure you take advantage and get great experience of uh, cloud solution. So it's more like a myth, but security is a collaborative you know, uh, kind of uh, uh, approach. So, uh, parting short, I think um, still for those who are still uh, sleeping, I mean, cloud, uh, cloud, you want to ensure you get the advantage of speed to market. Uh, like those in banking and insurance, there's a lot of pressure from, uh, uh, from, from, from your customers that you need to be on top of your staff. Uh, and CIOs today, I mean, they also want, there's a push for the CIOs also to you know, sit at the board or be report directly to the CEO and be able to also add value at the board level. And this, this is a time that you, know, you have more time to be innovative so that these other stuff that we used to do, the traditional way of running IT is gone. Already someone is doing it for you. Uh, like you have the autonom uh, autonomous database. You need to think about you're going to do your purchase or so you need to shut down and bring your customers down for two hours or for two days. No, it's already done for you. Release it to, to the provider and you can take it to the bank and then focus on uh, strategic uh, uh, issues, be able to, uh, uh, to add more value to the, the organization and also your customers. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Duncan. Um, Richard, I believe you haven't had the chance to give your parting shot. Yeah, you're putting me between the lunch and the people. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> so thank you very much. But again, um, my parting shot would be always plan well, understand your environment, continually monitor to because technology changes pretty fast. Um, 30 milliseconds in technology is, is a huge um, chunk of time. Um, so always plan well and involve everybody when you're making the decisions as CIOs, as IT managers, as anybody. When you're making a decision, just make sure you understand the requirements of everybody, the needs of everybody, involve them and make them part of your journey for success of your project. Thank you very much. Thank you.